you for joining me in this series of Ask the Business Data Analyst, where we will explore different questions related to work done by business data analysts. This video is brought to you by Tech Canvas, which is an IIBA and PMI authorized training partner. Tech Canvas offers project management, business analysis, analytics, and domain certification training. I am Priya Telam, a senior data analyst with a diversified professional experience of 10 years in various MNCs. I'm passionate about using data to solve problems. I'm a Tableau Desktop Specialist and IIBA Certified Business Data Analyst. So the question for today is, what is descriptive analytics? And in this video, we'll be covering different topics like what is descriptive analytics, some examples, the descriptive analytics process, and the advantages and disadvantages. Now, suppose you have been steadily investing in different mutual funds for, say, six months. Obviously, having invested your hard-earned money you want to keep track and check how the mutual funds are performing, right? Here, you are exploring what has happened. Now, you will modify your following investment plans in the next months based on what you see. So, you will address the what actions are needed question here, right? So, in short, you are performing descriptive analytics. Now, in our everyday life, we have so many examples where we explore these questions, like what has happened or what actions are needed or what exactly is the problem. So this is nothing but descriptive analytics, also known as exploratory analytics. In our everyday lives, we don't use any complex tools and the amount of data we deal with is usually very less. But in the case of organizations, this most commonly used and most simplistic form of data analysis is done using different tools and programs on enormous amounts of data. Now, an organization's analytics journey typically starts with descriptive analytics. We dig deep into vast amounts of historical and current data, convert them into simple to understand visuals or tables, highlight patterns and trends, and derive insights valuable for the business. The output of descriptive statistics is either reports or visualizations. Now, now reports help track the key performance indicators in an organization's financial statements, and this is prepared using descriptive statistics. Whereas simple but meaningful visualizations like graphs and bar charts, which are easily understood by a broad audience, are most commonly used. Now, what do you think? How does descriptive analytics help organizations? Well, it helps organizations understand the current business performance, historical trends like what has happened till now, and their strengths and weaknesses. Business leaders use it to track the key performance indicators such as monthly growth in revenue and expenses. Marketing team uses descriptive analytics to track campaign performance by monitoring metrics like conversion rates and the number of social media followers and so on. Manufacturing groups monitor metrics such as production line downtime and the defects identified, and much more. Some other common examples are a better understanding of customers by tracking their shopping history, determining the return on social media initiatives such as growth in followers or the engagement rates and returns, or summarizing past events like sales. The summarized reports that we get from Google Analytics can help the user analyze whether the past marketing campaign was successful or not. Netflix uses customer data to determine which TV series and movies are trending at any given time. 
So this helps Netflix users understand what is currently the most popular uh, movie. It also gives Netflix vital information about the types of media, the themes, the actors doing well in the given time. This can drive future decisions for content creation, contract signing, and marketing. Now, the vast amount of data is of no use unless analyzed, right? For example, millions of individual sales transactions will not give you an insight into whether the product-wise sales are higher or lower than the past sales. Descriptive analytics is the first step in making sense of data, and it uses simple math and descriptive statistical tools, such as averages, percentage changes, and so on. So let us understand how it is actually implemented in the industry. The first step is to understand the business requirement and what metrics we want to track. Next, we identify the data required, maybe from multiple sources, internal or external, right? After that, we need to extract and prepare data for analysis. Make sure that data is of good quality, suitable for analysis. This is time consuming, but the most crucial step includes data cleaning, removing inconsistencies and errors, and transforming data suitable for further analysis. Then we proceed to analyzing the data. It can be done using anything from Excel to advanced BI tools. Descriptive analytics involves basic mathematical and statistical operations. It provides summarized data and also the ability to drill down for details. For example, the total revenue generated by a bookstore is a summary statistic. But this can be drilled down to understand the revenue generated for different book categories. Now, once our analysis is ready, we present the results that we find. They are often presented visually in easy to understand graphs for a broad spectrum of stakeholders. So these are the basic steps followed while performing descriptive analytics. And lastly, let us conclude with the advantages and disadvantages of descriptive analytics. Descriptive analytics is frequently used in the day-to-day -day operations of an organization as it gives a precise performance picture. It does not require a deep knowledge of analysis or statistical methods and can be performed with available tools like Excel. It lays the foundation for more advanced analytics like predictive and prescriptive analytics. Descriptive analytics may highlight gaps in the business processes early on before they turn into problems. For example, a particular month's revenue may look good compared with the last quarter, but a deeper historical analysis may highlight a decreasing trend of revenue. On the other hand, descriptive analytics touches only the surface of the data. Insights revealed do neither dig into why something happened nor are they used to make any kind of predictions. So I'm sure by now you must have got a broad idea of what is descriptive analytics and how it is done. Let us know your questions in the comments and we will take them up in the next episode. Stay tuned for more interesting videos in this learning series. Thanks for joining us and good luck.